So the cheesecake has been chilling in the fridge overnight and uh, I think it looks great. Um, I am very excited about trying this and I have someone who is attending the Easter party who is very into Oreos. Uh, so I'm really interested to see what they think about this, but I am trying to do a different topping than what the original recipe calls for, which I can link in the descriptions by Nora Cooks. Definitely recommend her recipes if you've never tried anything by hers, but I want to try something like a magic shell sort of toppings. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that because it is actually shockingly simple to do that. If you don't know what magic shell is, it's basically like a chocolate sauce that once it touches anything cold, it just like solidifies. It just becomes like, goes from melted to solid. It kind of creates like a chocolate shell on whatever it is that you're covering. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. To make this chocolate shell recipe, all you have to do is combine chocolate and coconut oil. That's it. I've seen recipes where people say two to one ratio or a four to one ratio, but honestly, I just make sure that I have more chocolate than coconut oil. I haven't found that this recipe is very specific. You could use a double boiler to melt it down, but honestly, just make it easier on yourself a microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stir it around. The coconut oil will melt before the chocolate, but don't worry about it. Once it's mostly melted, just stir it around until it's all melted. The hotter parts will definitely heat up the cooler parts. And then you're ready to top your ice cream, cheesecake, salad, whatever you want to do with it. It's your magic shell. You can do what you want with it. Now that we have our chocolate shell all melted, I'm going to take the Oreo cheesecake out of the fridge. And really all I'm going to do is just drizzle this chocolate shell all over this and whatever kind of, yeah, just like that. Just whatever kind of design you want to do. It's just going to be kind of random kind of like abstract art, you know that those art pieces that sell for like millions of dollars and you're just like, I could have done that. That's what I'm going for today. Maybe a Jackson Pollock kind of look. Making sure to go all the way around the edges because you don't want to not get some chocolate in your bite, right? I think this actually looks pretty good. So I'm happy with this. I don't want to tilt it too much because then I think it will kind of mess with the design, but that is what we're working with. And just so that you can actually hear what it's going to sound like, I'm gonna put the microphone right here so you can see that it is in fact hard. But I don't wanna to make too many marks on here. So <laughs> now you know it's hard and we're gonna move on to the buffalo chicken wing dip. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you probably already know that pretty much any party that I go to, everybody asks me to bring this buffalo chicken wing dip. It's always the first one gone. Even the non-vegans go crazy for it. I've actually thrown a party before where we went through it so fast, I actually had to go to the store and get more ingredients and make it again, and then we finished it again. That's how good this dip is. And it's super simple. Although this time I'm trying a few new ingredients. Instead of the traditional cream cheese flavor, I'm going with Tofutis Herbs and Chive Cream Cheese, which I think will just add a little more depth to the flavor of this dish. And I'm trying Daring's Cajun Flavored Chicken. For people who can't really handle their spice, this might be a little spicy, uh, but if you can handle your spice, it just adds an additional flavor that I think will really pair nicely with the rest of the dip. And it will add a bit more of a kick, but this recipe isn't terribly spicy anyway, because we're just using Frank's Red Hot. And I'm sure that there's some Daya haters out there, but I have found that Daya's cutting board shreds is some of the best melting cheese. If you disagree and think that there is a better melting cheese, then please comment down below, let me know, because I've found that there's really good cheeses like BioLife and Chow and stuff, but they just don't always melt the best. One pro tip about this dip is if you are going to be traveling, I would definitely recommend if you can, try to bring it raw and then maybe cook it wherever you're going because otherwise it can get kind of sloshy as you're, <laughs> as you're driving around uh, and it's much more like stable and thick and will just stay in place and won't burn anything, won't get on your seats uh, if you actually cook it where it is that you're going. And another thing I wanted to point out is when I go to a family gathering or just have friends over or something like that, I don't worry about health at all. I just want the vegan food to taste really, really good because I just always think that instead of trying to have a debate with someone to try to get someone to go vegan, I think that it's much better and much more effective to just have really good vegan food, make veganism seem really fun and cool. That's how I got my whole family to go vegan. I got one of my friends to go vegan. I have a bunch of friends that are just like very vegan friendly just because I'm not combative with it. I'm, I'm really nice to them. 
them and you know, if they have any questions they know they can always come to me um, but I also just make really good food and they just really like it and speaking of uh, my sister's husband is the one who is really obsessed with Oreos so I'm gonna see how he likes the cheesecake and I'm very excited to see what my sister's reaction is gonna be because she can't handle secrets she knows that I made a dessert but she has no idea what it is and it's been killing her like the past couple days <laughs> wait how did you guess that because I've been talking about that tofu stuff, so I was like, I bet it's a cheesecake. And then you asked mom to buy Oreos. Oh. She's a detective, you know. And you said, Jimmy, you're gonna be so happy you stayed in Syracuse. So I had a feeling it was Oreos, wow. and I also had a feeling it was cheesecake. I really so did myself in this time. You did. Kara said that I was actually more surprised than Leah. Leah, I need a guess what the right What? How did you know? It was my first guess. <laughs> How do my ears look? They look very festive. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Happy Easter. What's in this one? Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. He looks so enthused. <laughs> All right, so we have the sister who can't take secrets and the guy who loves Oreos. All right. <laughs> it's not very good. No, he, I probably shouldn't even try it, huh? Oh, yeah. Don't waste your time. Give up later. <laughs> I'm not even... I'm just going to... I'll probably finish it for you so that way you don't have to... Yeah, thanks, uh, Leah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Looks gross now, but like I said, it was one of the first dips gone, and this only has one piece left. I thought I would save it for you guys because I figured you would appreciate an actual review because my family's so sarcastic they can't give actual answers. So I guess I'm just gonna have to eat another bite of this. The crust, obviously, is very Oreo-y. Uh, it's nice and crumbly. The cheesecake part, obviously, is gonna have a better texture when it just comes out of the fridge. Uh, this has been sitting out for a while, uh, but still very good. Uh, the lemon adds like a little bit of like a bite, which as actually pairs very nicely uh, with the rest of it. There's, it's obviously very sweet uh, because of all the sugar, and then all the coconut oil and the Oreos is very fatty. It's, it's just super good. It's very fatty. It's very sugary. It's not very good for you, but it's very good for the taste buds. And I actually really recommend this recipe.